Hello and welcome back. So, I bought a new magnification headset. And, and I gotta say, I, I really do like the concept. I like the the mounting of it. Um, let me clear off some space here. We're gonna do some updating, hacking, modifying, making better on the fly here today with me. So, so bear with me as we do this. And so of course, have my Mountain Dew cracked open and ready to go. As is, I don't know if it's turkey, so we've got a little plug in. So, what you guys tell us what we're doing? Is that how it works? 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 Sorry, ignore the insulin pump, it's a pain sometimes. Always beeping at me, telling me I'm doing something wrong. Alright, so. What we're going to need to do is actually add a simple cutting wheel because we're going to be making some modifications here to this really unique and awesome headset. This is a magnification headset and it comes with five different style, or not style, same style, five different lenses that are five different levels of magnification. And the unique thing about it is the weight, how light it is, how it mounts on your head. And the fact that it does come with a headband option, something similar to this Energizer headband. It has the elastic. These arms on the glasses actually do remove, and you can put the headband on. And that's really nice, too. Um, the only thing it has as far as a downfall, in my personal opinion, well, one, the definite benefit is size versus weight. I'm tired of this thing being on my head. I'm really, really tired of having to adjust the tightness on this constantly and readjust this in the back. If you're like me, you wear a hat. This makes it even worse, more of a pain. But you do like the fact that the LED comes with a two AAA battery flash light. light uh, so you're not using uncommon like watch batteries or anything like that. Yeah, that just went into the bucket. Um, <clears throat> and I'm gonna show you why. The one downfall of this particular headset is its lighting. Its lighting seriously has an issue. And the problem with it is they crammed two little LEDs side by side next to each other, which is causing a thermal overheat of the LEDs, which at some point, about five minutes into running it, the LEDs turn blue and start to actually decrease in lumens. It starts off really bright, it starts off really great, and you're thinking, wow, look at how bright that is, that's awesome. And then it goes away. So after five minutes, if you're doing anything more than five minutes worth of work, well, it's not as good as it started off with anymore. In fact, you're actually struggling to see the components that you're working on now after five minutes, which is really, really sad. Because the rest of the, the design of it, I truly do like. It's got acrylic lenses, uh, which is harder to scratch than your typical plastic lenses. That's some of the, I can't believe I just broke that cutting disc while installing it. Some of the, the typical lenses do. Um, let's go ahead and crumble that disc up and let, let's get a new one here. There we go. So that's a nice option as well and a nice feature about it. And the overall weight of it is just really nice, to tell you the truth. I do like the weight of it completely. Like I said, the one downfall of it being is that LED lighting system on it. Not to mention, it does use, I won't call it proprietary battery system, but just not your, your standard AAA, AA kind of battery system. It uses some sort of button cell batteries and I'm not a big fan of those, honestly. And each button cell is actually 1.5 volts, which typically ends up being a total of about a 3.5 to 3.75 volt load on these two little LEDs. And the way they wired them, no wonder it's, it's constantly overheating. Um, I mean, it, it's just, I don't know they need to either redesign it or they need to do away with it. So what we're going to do here today is we're going to do away with it. I originally started off intending and trying to redesign it 
And as small as the circuit board was that I had these two LEDs on, I just could not get it to fit properly in this plastic enclosure that, uh, that it comes installed on. So because of this, we've ditched the redesign idea and we've decided to go with make it better. Something I love to do, make things better. Of course, they can't do this because, well, my idea of making it better is actually using, I can't believe I still have the plastic on this. I do that with a lot of my stuff for some reason. It really doesn't pick up nicely on camera. It's actually not flattering at all. So let me go ahead and peel this off. There we go. So we have a little scale here and you can see, I'm gonna turn the scale on and take a look at the weight of their, don't you love my LED lighting system here by the way? It, it's completely, I, I, this is without the circuit board. We're looking at 0.35 ounces. If we throw the circuit board in there and the two LEDs, it makes uh, 0 0.37, 0 0.35 again. So let's change this over to grams where we can get a, um, a, a better accurate reading on this. That wasn't properly zeroed out. Yeah, it was. Okay. So with the batteries, you're looking at 10.4, 10.4 grams. So, and like I said, it's got those button cell batteries, and I'm not a huge fan of those at all. Um, especially when I got in loop batteries in, in, on hand, and they last forever with LED lighting. Uh, so we want to make this about the same weight, about 10.3 grams. How about lighter? 9.3. This is a night core tube. A night core tube has a single cell lithium polymer battery, uh, standard cell voltage, 3.7 volts, charges maxed out at 4.2 volts, comes with a USB rechargeable, so we can charge this after we're done doing our little small soldering work every night. If I had fingernails, I could actually get that open to show you the USB charging port on there. And the beautiful thing about it is it has low, high, or anywhere in between, variable setting. So the battery life on this should be fairly good because we're not gonna to have to keep it super bright. There are modified versions of this out there. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Vin, I'm proud to say I've actually had in-depth communication with him, really nice guy. And he's actually taught me a few things as far as how to modify a tube. And you can see the difference in lighting here. This one being much brighter, but also a lower tint because it's a completely different LED. This stock one being more of a natural tint, but also a lower lumens rating on it. But I want the lower rating because we were more interested in battery life. So we're going to make it lighter than its original LED setting. We're going to make it more earthly friendly, kind of suiting that this one's green, rechargeable, and we're just going to make it work for us. And we're going to make it happen in this headset here, this magnification headset. That's what we got to do. We got to make it happen. Now, by the time I'm done with this modification, it may come out to about 10.3 grams because I'm looking to use a little bit of Velcro within this modification. Um, either that or I'm going to have to notch out a side of this headset here to include enough space to actually put a micro USB full size, including the casing of it in here. But I'm thinking Velcro would be a much better option. That way I can just simply remove it when I'm done, put it on charge somewhere, and then pop it back in, turn it on, put the headset on me, and I'm good to go. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this stock LED lighting out of there. And by doing this, you will actually take it, and it's in two little slotted rails. So I don't know if this is actually going to go back in after some of the modifications I've tried to do. Probably not. But you're going to lift this up like so all the way to about this angle here. You'll feel it loosen up a little bit, and we're going to give it a yank up, and it's going to come out of these little slots here. Boom. Done. What you decide to do with this, that's your choice. Me? There's the bucket. All right. So I like the headset. We're going to keep the headset. That's definitely a must in this factor is to keep that headset because it does actually work out really well. And I need one more thing. I actually forgot to bring over 
my screwdriver set. So now we've got the screwdriver set here. There is a little bit of this tube that's going to get in my way for my thought process behind the redesign of this headset using the tube as the leg for the headset. We're going, so we're going to take a Phillips Zero here. We're going to remove the screws, the four screws out of the tube. I'm probably going to need my tweezers from my other bench as well. In fact, we can get this out of the way. All I needed was that Phillips Zero bit. I'll set that aside. And I say tweezers for actually putting these screws back in. They are, they're, they're not too hard to handle, but they are a little hard to handle. Now we don't need to open up the whole entire thing and worry about the LED and the battery coming loose and everything. Let's just give it a little crack here in the bottom. Cause that little crack there, in fact, let's grab the tweezers now. That little crack there will give me enough room to wiggle out these metal brackets. Then we don't have to worry about putting everything back together again. We actually pulled these brackets out without fully opening the whole entire light, the tube. So we can put these screws back in. See if I can get one going without having to use a pair of tweezers. There we go. This is going to give me just a little bit of room. Now on my modifications, I really like Nightcore's design. I really like Nightcore's tube. Nightcore is not the flawed component in this equation here. These magnification glasses actually contain the flawed component. So besides removing these metal pieces out of the back of the Nightcore, which by the way, will probably lighten up our overall weight of this modification and even after adding Velcro will probably end up being lighter than the stock version that it had and I'm having some issues here with muscle control today it hasn't been one of the, my best days but um, let me bring this a little closer to me so I can actually do this faster there we go So if I was to take a weight reading on this again, because these are actually metal, these are actually quite a bit of weight compared to this whole entire object here. Let's go ahead and turn the unit on again. We were at 10.3 grams, I believe. Now we're at 8.7. Wow, we're even getting better. If you wanted to, we could even cut the end of this off and make this a straight flat line across, if you wanted to. The flat line would work better as far as fitting for how, what I'm looking to do here, but eh. Like I said, I actually like the night core. Night core is not the problem. The headset was the problem. So if we look at this, the headset design here, the width of it is about right to hold this flashlight, except for where these little clips expand for the bracket slots of where the other lighting was. So what we need to do is we need to remove those little clips, those expansions there on the side. And like I said, if you wanted to flatten the back of the night core, you could. It will bring the light a little closer into the back like this. It may not make that much of a difference overall. The little bit of light sticking out in front of the headset shouldn't make a difference as far as lighting up the area where I'm wanting to be focused on. And the, the range of the beam that's provided in this light, this LED, the five millimeter light that the night core uses, it's so wide when you're looking at a circuit board you shouldn't have the need to have to adjust this up or down or anything like that because the, 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 the range of the beam that the beam covers is going to cover what you need. Now originally when I thought about making this better, I was actually putting on those glasses and an Energizer 3 AAA. You know, well it's got a dual light, but yeah. Um, I don't need the red. You know, I was slapping this over top of my head and putting this on my forehead while these were on my ears doing the magnification for me. And the beam on this is great and super bright. I'll give it that. If you're riding a bike, these are great little headsets. But the weight of it, the weight of it was just getting to me. And I'm thinking, we can do this better. We can make this lighter. I mean, this alone is close to 77 grams, which is quite a bit different from eight or the original 11, 11 to 12 grams that the original lighting was for this headset. 
So let's go ahead and see if we can make these modifications. I'm going to start by removing the lens so I don't damage the lens. Pulling this straight up and down so I can actually set it flat on the workbench and give myself a stable area to work. As you can see, I, this is what I did here. I basically just brought this all the way up and send it down flat so I can hold the base here as I'm doing the cutting over here and on the slides, on the slots. And let's see if we can make this better. We shouldn't have to need a lot of speed for this. Take the disc nice and slow, make a clean cut. Check to see how far along we are here. Nope, we still need a little bit more. We got about the right depth in though. That's good. And I think that just about does it for that side. Let's clean that out, turn this around. We'll clean up that plastic that melted up towards the top later. Again, flatten out the headset, get rid of that wobble, get that good stability in there. Take it slow. It's going to be more melting than cutting here, but that's okay. Melting is easier to clean up afterwards. I can always clean up the melting. The melting would just simply break off and maybe a little bit of filing afterwards to give it a nice clean break. Um, but you can see that just broke right off. That's, that's not an issue at all. Look at that. That came off without a problem. All right. Go back to our Nightcore here and let's double check this. Did we bring off enough? Just about. It actually, wow. Because of the USB rubber padding there, look at that. I actually cut it to the point where I don't need to even worry about any Velcro. It slips right in there and it, it kind of even clicks a little bit. That is beautiful. Let's bring it up about 50% lighting. That is more than enough. Let's bring the circuit board into play here. Oh yeah, that is fine. Our typical distance on this is about 8 inches from my head. That covers it perfectly. I'm about 8 inches high here. That is great. You know what? <laughs> Let's just, and it's still kind of adjustable with the lens. Let's go ahead and put these uh, ticket safety glasses off here. Let's go ahead and snap that lens back in. Where did I set that lens aside? There we go. Almost put it in backwards. I'm sure I would have realized that as soon as I put it on. And because it's got these little tabs that actually bend out in there, it actually does kind of click on the night core there. That's beautiful. All right, now let's go ahead and put it on and get this little test run here. I know, extreme. Whoever works really in the dark. Oh, that's great. I can actually see things nice and clear. The magnification's great. The lighting's great. If I did need to adjust the beam a little bit, I can point it down a little bit and then actually bring my lens out forward a little bit. So it is a little bit adjustable. But, and, and this, I believe, what was this on? Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, if I really want to see something, including reflection, back at me off of a green PCB board, well, that, that does do, do the job. High is definitely high. So let's go ahead and put it on low, and then hold the button down until I get that right level. That is about perfect. Not, not, not too much glare, but I can still see my components good enough to actually do the fine sensitive work I would need to do. While removing or adding any type of parts, reading the uh, chip numbers. For example, this is an O and B, and this actually says this is upside down to RYZ17 18. That is my, it seems to be my power regulator there. It's got a three row power regulation on it. Um, there's also this RG2 over here, it's a 17 33G. RQC28. This is actually upside down too. And you know how hard it is to read lettering off of circuit chips, especially when I'm not using a high magnification here. This is only the three out of five that these glasses come with. This is great. I absolutely love this. It's lighter. 
than the original lighting system was. Like I said, it's rechargeable. It's got more of a variable tone to it, so you get to select the lighting that's right for you, the one that feels the most comfortable to you. It will not overheat like the old lighting system did, and it will not dim down after five minutes. It seems to really snap in place. That that's, was unexpected, um, that it snapped in place so well. But also a great welcome. It's rechargeable, as I mentioned. So we take this out when we're done doing soldering, we pop it on the charger and we're good to go. We can turn this back on, bring it back up to about that lighting that we like. And we can take this and actually just slip it back in there. And this time it did catch the uh, boot on the, uh, the charge port. So be careful with that. There it goes. And because I only removed a very little bit of plastic, it's not even going down completely to the bottom base here in the back. As I was going to use a little bit of Velcro to attach it, it's got a slight angle point down, which is actually perfect for the way these lenses are actually lined up. But all in all, it's a better design. It's a better lighting system for these headsets. So I like these magnification headsets. I don't want to get rid of the magnification headset, but they're, like I said, the lighting system was crap. I'm sorry, guys. I mean... There's crap and there's crap, and that was it, the definition of it. Um, the headset will run you about, I think, anywhere from $8 to $12. <clears throat> not a bad price. I'm not expecting them to last me 20 years, but they will get me at least a year, maybe even two, of light use out of it. I mean, all you're doing is taking it on, putting it back on your head. There's not much actually going on here as far as moving parts constantly. Once you find the lens that you like, pretty much you're going to stick to that lens. And then I can actually take a loop underneath this lens if I need to see something closer and use the loop in, in conjunction with the actual lens that's on my head. So it's not like I got to take my lenses on and off and change them constantly. And yet the Nikkor will only run you about $9.99, another $10. Great combination. $20. Nice magnification headset with proper lighting, more variable adjustment lighting, and rechargeable. Can't go wrong. As far as I'm concerned, that's a winning combination there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, go ahead and click, give me a thumbs up on it. Click subscribe so you can see more videos like this in the future. And I hope to bring out more things and more reviews coming up here soon. Keep on watching and keep on tinkering with your electronics and enjoy your hobby.